Recently in the free software series, I showed you OBS Studio, which is a free and open source screen recorder for Windows, Mac, and Linux. In the comments of that video, many of you asked for me to do a tutorial. In this beginner's guide, I will show you how to set up and use OBS Studio. Coming up next on Tech Gumbo. To get OBS Studio onto your computer, go to their website, which is obsproject.com. There'll be a link in the description of this video. You'll see on this page that you have options for Windows 7 Plus, Mac OS 10.10 Plus, and Linux. The Windows and Mac downloads are standard installer packages. If you select the Linux link, it will open up a new page with the install directions. Once you have OBS installed, Open up the program. Since this is a beginner's guide, I'll go at a slower pace and keep this simple to get you started with using OBS Studio. This is now my preferred screen capture program, so I'll also go over the settings that I use to record my screen. Now that you have OBS opened, if this is your first time using this software, the screen capture area within this window should be black. First, you will need to set up a source. So go down to the Sources box, select the plus sign. You will have several choices. I'll go over the two that are used most often. If you plan to record your screen with the files saved to your computer so you can edit them later on, select Display Capture. I already have a Display Capture set up, so this one is automatically named Display Capture 2. You can rename it if you want. Make sure that Make Source Visible is checked, then select OK. Click on the Display button to select the monitor you would like to record. If you have a single monitor, you should only have one option here. If you run a multiple monitor setup, select your monitor. If you want your mouse cursor to be captured when OBS records, make sure that Capture Cursor is checked. When done, select OK. Let's go back to the Sources box and select the plus sign again. If you plan to record the video games that you play, select Game Capture. Just like before, you can change the name and make sure Make Source Visible is checked. Select OK. You can just leave everything here on the defaults and select OK again. If you want to change the source settings, select the source then select the settings icon. Here you can change the display. To delete a source, select it, then select the minus sign. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to remove display capture 2. Select yes. And now it's gone. The up down arrows change the priority of the sources. Make sure the source you currently want to use is at the top of the list. In addition to recording your display, OBS also records your desktop audio from games, websites, or any other software on your computer. It can also record the audio from your microphone. So let's head over to the mixer section. For desktop audio, click the settings icon to the right of the volume bar. Select properties from the drop down menu. Make sure that default is selected, then hit OK. Just below desktop audio, there's a separate listing for microphone. Select the settings icon, then properties. Here you can choose the microphone that you want to use. Once you have it selected, select OK. Let's take a quick look at the rest of the user interface. To the left of sources is scenes which will allow you to use more than one source while recording. This is a little bit more advanced for a beginner's tutorial, so we'll skip over this one. To the right of the mixer is Scene Transitions. If you're not using Scenes, there's no need to worry about this one. And to the right of the Scene Transitions is Controls. For doing a live stream, you would select Start Streaming. Start Recording is for a standard screen capture. Right now it says stop recording because I'm currently using it to record my screen. Once you become more comfortable with OBS, you may want to try out studio mode. 
for live streaming. Simply, it allows you to make changes while you're streaming, like adding and resizing images and adding text. Below Studio Mode is Settings and Exit. Exit is self-explanatory. Let's go into Settings, and I will show you which ones that I use for my recordings. In each category, I'll point out a few of the key settings. First, we'll take a look at the general settings where you have several languages that you can choose from. And you have a choice among three themes, which will change the way that OBS looks. I personally prefer the dark theme. If you're streaming and you want to save a copy of your live stream to your desktop, you would check automatically record when streaming. If your computer is not that powerful, it may be best to leave this unchecked. In the stream category, Streaming services is the most common stream type. You can choose from different services, including Twitch, YouTube, and many others. For server, you can leave it on auto or manually change it to a location closer to you, which in my case would be Dallas, Texas. And the stream key section is where you'd paste the key from the service you're using. In output, we'll look at the simple mode. The streaming and recording settings here will work for most of you. If you are streaming, you may want to increase the video bitrate to 3000 or 3500. Just don't make it so high that people have difficulty streaming your broadcast. If you are recording, set the recording path where you want your files to be saved. Set the recording quality to high, recording format to MP4, and encoder to hardware. Here at the bottom you'll see a warning for MP4 listed. Just ignore it. I've never had an issue using that format with OBS. Next is audio. You shouldn't need to make any changes here. I use a sample bitrate of 48. As explained earlier, the desktop audio records your computer sounds. Mine is on default. And you can also choose your microphone here. In video, there are key points to go over. In this setting, I can't show you the drop-down menus while recording is active, but for the base resolution, it would be best to set your base resolution to the size of your display. Your options will vary. For output resolution, 1920 by 1080 is preferred. If you're on a lower powered system, you may want to change this to 1280 by 720. Downscale filter, by linear is the lowest. If I were able to open this drop-down menu, there are two other options. So use one of the other two if your system can handle it. And the frames per second values will also depend on your hardware. Use 60 FPS if you can. Otherwise, try reducing to 30 FPS. The hotkeys section is where you can assign keyboard shortcuts. I only use a few. In this recording, I use F12 to start, and escape to stop. And for the last settings category, which is advanced, for most of you the default settings should work just fine. I've never changed them and so far I've had no issues. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this beginner's tutorial helped you out with learning how to use OBS Studio. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you. If you are new to this channel, make sure to click the subscribe button and bell notification icon so you don't miss out on the latest videos from our Beginner's Guide series and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.